Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back and uh, this is lecture number 56, we will be talking about linear differential equations of higher order and we will go through the solution uh, of uh, such differential equations and in particular in today's lecture we will be talking about uh, these linear differential equations of higher order with constant coefficients. So, that is a particular case of uh, a more general uh, linear differential equations. So, here the general form of such differential equations which we will be talking about in today's lecture is this nth derivative of y plus this a 1 and that is the constant here with uh, these constant coefficients n minus 1 nth derivative of y and this will continue up to uh, the y term with the uh, coefficient here again the constant coefficient coefficient a n. So, these coefficients a 1, a 2, a 3, a n they are the constants here and the right hand side function x. Uh, that can be a function of uh, x. So, these are the constant and x uh, is a function of x. It can be also a constant, but in general we can take as a function of x. So, such a equation is called a linear differential equation because this is linear there is no product of y or uh, y with the its derivative. So, it is a linear differential equation and nth order uh, linear differential equation. So, the general solution which we will be talking about uh, uh, today's uh, in today's lecture will be having two uh, factors here one is called the complementary function the other one is called the particular integral. So, this complementary function is nothing but the solution of uh, so this is just the solution of solution of the homogeneous equation homogeneous means when we set here this x to 0. So, the corresponding homogeneous equation by setting this right hand side equal to 0 we call such equations as a homogeneous equation and this complementary function here is the solution of, of a homogeneous corresponding homogeneous equation when we set this right hand side equal to 0. So, we will be talking about more here how to get uh, the solution of this uh, homogeneous equation. In, in the next lecture and also about the particular integral. So, the particular integral we call any solution which satisfy any particular solution which satisfy uh, the given equation with, with, with this here x. So, this is one particular solution and then when we add uh, the complementary function or uh, the general solution of the homogeneous equation then we can get and we will see in today's lecture how this will form a general solution of the given non-homogeneous differential equation. So, here since this is the general solution of the homogeneous equation this will have n uh, arbitrary constants uh, as discussed before that this is the nth order differential equation. So, we must have n, uh, n arbitrary constant in the general solution of the given differential equation here and this particular integral which is a particular a solution of, of this given differential equation uh, will have uh, will not have a constant. So, it will be free from arbitrary constant or if there is any constant appears here that will be merged automatically in the complementary function. So, uh, this is one way of getting the solution of this uh, such a non-homogeneous. So, when this x is not 0 we call the non-homogeneous equation when this x is 0 uh, we call as homogeneous differential equation. So, this general solution then this is one uh, method or the easy method to get the general solution of the of the given non-homogeneous equation uh, that if we can get this complementary function which is the general solution of the homogeneous equation and we will see uh, that this is uh, very easy to get uh, the general solution of the homogeneous equation and then we need to find just one particular solution which satisfies the given 
uh, differential equation and when we add the two. So, we will have naturally these n arbitrary constants and today we will see that this will become a general solution of the given uh, differential equation. So, here what is the complementary function and how to uh, get this idea we will uh, we will give now. So, this is the general solution as I said of this homogeneous equation, homogeneous equation means this setting this right hand side equal to 0 and the particular integral uh, will have a, a very particular solution of the given differential equations meaning that if A is any particular solution then this will satisfy. Uh, the given differential equation. So, when we substitute here in the left hand side this v we should get the right hand side x. So, this will satisfy the given uh, differential equation and uh, that is uh, how we define the complementary function and the particular integral and we have seen in the earlier slide, but we will prove later when we add this complementary function and the particular integral we basically get the general solution of of the given of the given this non homogeneous uh, differential equation so before we go to that discussion we need to also introduce uh, here like linear independence of solution though we have uh, talked about linear dependence in an independence in uh, linear algebra and the similar concept we will just uh, revise again here. So, two functions y 1 and y 2 are linearly independent. So, first we are introducing for two functions because this is much easier to see the linear independence for two function if one is not the constant multiple of the other. So, if one function we cannot write as a constant multiplication of the other for example, we have sin x and we have 2 times sin x. So, they are linearly dependent because the, uh, the second function is just the 2 times of the first function. So, but for linearly independent functions we cannot write as a constant multiple of the other. In other words or more formally we uh, discuss and that was uh, already discussed in linear algebra that if this c 1 y 1 and plus c 2 y 2 the c 1 c 2 are some constants. So, if this combination when set to 0 if this implies that or this is true only when c 1 is equal to 0 and c 2 is equal to 0 then we call that these y 1 and y 2 are linearly independent. And if we get uh, any non zero solution which satisfy this equation then they are uh, linearly dependent because one uh, function one can write in terms of the other function. So, there will be dependency on each other, but uh, when we talk about that when this combination is 0 this is only possible when c 1 is 0 and c 2 is 0 there is no other possible values of c 1 and c 2 then we call that these solutions are linearly independent or for the case of two functions this is very easy to check because you can take just y 1 by y 2 divide the two functions and if this is not equal to constant uh, then uh, we call that this is linearly these functions are linearly independent and this is equal to constant then the functions are linearly dependent. So, some examples of this linear dependence. So, for example, sin x and cos, cos x when you divide y 1 by y 2 will get 10 x. So, which is not constant. Uh, so, these sin x and cos x they are linearly independent functions. The another example we can talk about sin 2 x uh, and the sin x. So, here again if we take the ratio here sin 2 x over sin x. So, this will be uh, sin 2 x over sin x. So, 2 sin x and cos x divided by uh, sin x. So, sin x sin x get cancel and we have the 2 times cos x which is again not constant and hence these uh, combination here with y 1 and y 2 they also form a linearly independent set. So, sin 2 x and sin x they are linearly independent. Also the functions exponential alpha 1 x and exponential alpha 2 x. So, here also if we take the uh, they take such a ratio here. So, when alpha 1 and alpha 2 these are two, uh, two different numbers two different real numbers. So, then these functions are linearly independent. So, when alpha 1 is not equal to alpha 2 uh, then we have that e power alpha 1 x and e power alpha 2 x they are linearly independent. Coming uh, to the linear dependence uh, for 
for for many functions that means for n functions y1 y2 yn and they are uh, said to be linearly independent and then we can generalize this definition which uh, we have also used for two functions that if this linear combination c1 y1 plus c2 y2 uh, plus cn yn is equal to 0 if this combination when set to 0 is possible only when all these c's are 0 then we call that these uh, set here is linearly independent or these functions are linearly independent. So, again this is a uh, very formal definition and, and very important for, for uh, any functions not only for two functions we can generalize for uh, given n functions, but what is the problem here usually this is difficult to verify the linear independence using this definition because we have to set when there are n functions set to equal to 0 and then to realize that all these uh, c's are 0 that is the only solution here we are getting out of this equation uh, it is little bit difficult to, to show. So, there are some other ways to prove the linear independence of the uh, solutions when there are more than two functions and uh, one concept which is very useful to prove this linear independence is the Ronskian which is uh, w uh, this is the notation for the Ronskian we will define in a minute what is Ronskian. So, if the Ronskian here of this y 1, y 2, y 3, y n function uh, is non 0 if this Ronskian is non 0 then they uh, are linearly independent and what is this Ronskian this is a determinant here which is evaluated in this way. So, the first row here this y 1, y 2, y 3, y n the second row will have their derivatives third row again second order derivative and this nth row will have n minus 1 th uh, order derivatives. So, when we compute this determinant and we see that this is not equal to 0 then uh, these functions are linearly independent. So, this is one way of checking linear independence when there are more than two functions uh, we can do for the two functions as well this test, but uh, the earlier one we have uh, seen there for two functions one can easily see by taking the ratio of the two functions. So, this was about the linear independence and dependence uh, of the functions because we need to uh, introduce before we use these terminology now in the in setting up the solutions of uh, uh, linear differential equations. So, here let us consider this homogeneous equation first. So, d uh, this nth term n minus 1 nth order term and this constant uh, this a n and this y term equal to 0. So, this is the homogeneous equation because this right hand side is set to be 0. And uh, we let y 1 and y 2 uh, be any two linearly independent solutions. What we want to show here then the c 1 y 1 and c 2 y 2 is also a solution of the above equation and this uh, c 1 and c 2 are arbitrary constant. So, what we will show here that if we have two solutions y 1 and y 2 and two linearly independent solutions because if they are not linearly independent this c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 uh, itself does not make sense with having two arbitrary constants here we can uh, have only one constant in that case uh, because if one depends on the other we can write down again. Uh, one in terms of others. So, this will not make much sense. So, here y 1 and y 2 uh, be two linearly independent solutions and uh, in that case uh, then this c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 is also a solution of the above equation this uh, we will uh, see now here and for any arbitrary constant uh, c 1 and c 2. So, what we have to do we just substitute the c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 into the equation. So, we have this nth term uh, nth order term with this x here not the t we have used x there. So, uh, by substituting this c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 c n uh, c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 in place of y and we will check if this is equal to 0. Uh, if this is the case then we call that this is also a solution of the given differential equation. So, what we can write down now the c 1 we take common from here from here from uh, every term and then write down this uh, 
d n over d x power n and d n minus 1 over d x n minus 1 the n minus 1 at order derivative with respect to x and this plus the other one because with c 2 also we can take common because c 2 is sitting also in each term and now this will be with y 2 everywhere. So, the plus here uh, with this uh, uh, c 2 and d uh, the nth order derivative with respect to x n minus 1 th order derivative with respect to x and so on. And then what we will observe because this y 1 is the solution of this homogeneous equation. So, this will be 0 and y 2 is the solution of this homogeneous equation. So, this will be also 0 and c 1 into 0 plus c 2 into 0 will be 0. So, this satisfies uh, the given differential equation. Hence, the c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 is also a solution of the above differential equation. Indeed, we can generalize this not only for two functions, we can take more functions and uh, with the same idea we can prove that uh, that combination when we have for instance y 1, y 2, y 3, y n n linearly independent solutions then their combination c 1, y 1 plus c 2, y 2 plus c n, y 1 uh, will also be the solution of the given differential equation. So, here the generalization that this y 1, y 2, y 3 be n uh, linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous differential equation and uh, in that case the c 1, y 1 plus c 2, y 2 and so on c n, y 1, c n, y n will be also the solution of the given differential equation and not only the solution we have used now this term the general solution the general solution of the given homogeneous differential equation because this is a, a solution of the given differential equation that we can prove like we have done for two functions and this uh, solution has n arbitrary constant. So, that was our definition also for the general solution which was introduced earlier and uh, in this case when we have uh, these n arbitrary constants in the solution and it satisfy the equation meaning this is the solution. So, we can call this as the general general solution and uh, these are the arbitrary constants so, the c 1, c 2, c 3 and arbitrary constants. So, with this now what we have seen that if we can find these n linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous equation homogeneous differential equation then just their linear combination will be also uh, the solution of or in fact it will be the general solution of the given differential equation. Now, another important result which we uh, will consider now we will go through now. So, if u be the general solution here of the associated homogeneous equation. So, u we are talking about the solution of the homogeneous equation again recall that homogeneous equation is when the right hand side is set to be 0. So, the u satisfies that homogeneous equation and this v another a function v a be any particular solution of the given differential equation. So, here we have taken this two solutions the u is a solution or is the general solution which we have already discussed before when we have n linearly independent solution their combination exactly c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 and so on that will be the general solution of the homogeneous equation. And here we have taken another function v uh, be any particular solution of the given differential equation. So, the given differential equation means the given non homogeneous differential equation when the right hand side is not equal to 0. Then what we will uh, observe here that this u plus v when we add these two. So, uh, this u the for the homogeneous equation which we call actually the complementary function and a particular solution of the given differential equation we call the particular integral. So, when we add the c f and p i the complementary function plus this particular integral like here this will form a general solution of the given differential equation how to check that this is a general solution or not this solution should have n arbitrary constants that u itself has arbitrary n arbitrary constants and it should satisfy the given differential equation. So, what we will check now to prove that this is a general solution that this u plus v 
satisfies the given differential equation. If this satisfies the given differential equation and then naturally it has n arbitrary constants because u itself has n arbitrary constants. So, then this will be a general solution of the given differential equation. So, for that we will consider this equation the left hand side of the equation and substitute this u plus v into the equation. So, here we have this nth order uh, derivative with u plus v n minus 1 nth order derivative u plus v and and this a n u plus v. So, here we have taken this t as linearly in the, uh, as the independent uh, variable here t one can take x also. So, now in this case uh, since we have taken the t here. So, let us assume the u is a function of t and v is also a function of t. So, here we want to check whether this u plus v satisfies the given differential equation or not. Remember this u is the solution of the homogeneous equation and v is any solution of the non homogeneous diff given non homogeneous differential equation. Then we can use this linearity here. So, the derivative when applied on u plus v we can have this derivative on u and plus derivative on v and then we can actually break into two parts here one with this u here and the other one with the v. So, we have written into two parts this uh, u with this differential equation and the v again with the same this uh, left hand side of the differential equation. And now, if we look at because this u satisfies the uh, homogeneous equation meaning that this part here will be 0 because u is the solution of the homogeneous equation that means, this is equal to 0 and plus this v is a particular solution of the given non homogeneous equation meaning that here uh, we will get the right hand side that is the x uh, of the given differential equation. So, we have 0 here and we have x from here. So, this will add again to this right hand side of the given differential equation. So, what we have observed that this u plus v u plus v uh, satisfies the given differential equation because our differential equation was this nth order term here uh, with, with y and then n minus 1 nth order term and with, with uh, coefficient a 1 and so on a n y and is equal to x. This was the given differential equation. Then we have taken these two solutions one was the u which satisfies this homogeneous equation and the other one was v which was satisfying the, the full equation. So, here therefore, this u with u it is coming to be 0 and when with v this differential equation is giving x here and they are adding to x again. So, this u plus v is satisfying the given differential equation and it has n arbitrary constant because this u has an arbitrary constant. So, this u plus v is the general solution of the given differential equation. So, that is the trick we are using there uh, to get the general solution of the non homogeneous differential equation and we, we write down the general solution here for this differential equation as uh, this like we have written u plus v or we call this complementary function that is u here the solution of the homogeneous equation and we call the particular integral that is the uh, one particular solution a particular solution of the given non homogeneous equation. And we will observe now that finding the CF is easy and also finding one particular solution of the given differential equation is also easy. And when we add the two, we get actually the general solution of the given differential equation. So, uh, now because we will be talking about the solutions uh, the complementary function and particular integrals in the following lectures but to uh, here we will prepare for all the all the requirement or all the knowledge we need to discuss uh, the solution here. So, one concept which we will introduce now it is the operator. So, these are the basically the differential operators and in our differential equation we do see all these derivative terms. So, here we have uh, the first order this uh, differential t over d x the derivative. So, this is the operator it is a differential operator here the second order this differential operator and for the sake of convenience 
these operators we will uh, denote these operators we will denote by this symbols here d here we will take this d square and d cube means this third order derivative so uh, with this introduction of these operators here what we will uh, see now that this product of the operators product means here d minus this alpha alpha is a constant beta is another constant so d minus alpha d minus beta when we operate on y it is same as that first we operate d minus alpha and then we operate this d minus beta so here we will see that this product of uh, product of these operators uh, is same whether we first apply here the d minus beta or we apply d minus alpha it does not matter uh, the the value of this left hand side and the right hand side uh, are the same so here alpha beta any constant so this is a very important uh, fact here which will be used in in following lectures to uh, discuss the solution of uh, the differential equations so let's consider the left hand side here d minus alpha and d minus beta into y so what do we have here d minus alpha so first we operate this d minus beta meaning that the derivative of y minus beta y so the derivative of y with respect to x and minus this beta times y and uh, then we operate this d minus alpha also on this meaning this derivative term will be applied on this so d over dx on this minus this alpha will be also uh, operated on this but that is a constant here so nothing will happen so in this case when we uh, apply this uh, operator d here so this will be a second order derivative minus this beta and this first order derivative so that is here d2 y over dx2 minus this beta dy dx and this minus this alpha times dy dx and plus this alpha times beta y so this is the uh, result of this uh, operation which we have made first we have operated this d minus beta here and then uh, we have operated this d minus alpha operator and as a result we got this one which we can write down in this form as well the second order derivative term here we have this common term dy over dx so if we take this common we got minus this alpha plus beta term and plus this alpha beta y which we can write down again in terms of the operator because this is d2 here operated on y here minus alpha plus beta d operated on y and here uh, this alpha beta times y so if we y we can take this common to the right hand side then we have here the d square coming from this second order derivative minus this alpha beta this d the first order this derivative d over dx and this alpha beta from here and this y goes the right hand side of this operator so similarly one can also show that when we operate this d minus alpha first and then d minus beta because the same thing will happen now we will uh, end up at this expression which will be the same whether we operate first d minus alpha or d minus beta so meaning that we can again uh, write down the same thing when we apply first d minus alpha and then d minus beta so what we have observed here is that it does not matter that uh, what sequence you take here for the operations when we have uh, such differential operators so meaning this operator is same as this operator so we will not care much that which uh, in which sequence we should apply this operator to our uh, y here we can first apply d minus alpha then d minus beta or the other way around so the order of the operation uh, null factors as immaterial again also we will note that just in the previous slide that d minus beta d minus alpha or other way around d minus alpha d minus beta is equal to this one d square minus this alpha plus beta d plus alpha beta what is the observation here that this product it is working like the product here though this d r operator they are not the numbers but here they are being treated as the numbers here because if we make this product of this d minus beta d minus alpha what will happen here we will have d d so that will be d square though this d square is not the product of the d and d it is a second order derivative and this are the first order derivatives so here the d multiplied by d so we have like d square which is giving uh, d square there 
and then we will have minus this alpha times d terms minus beta times t which we have written this alpha plus beta d and then this product of alpha beta will give alpha beta and this everything applied on y. So, what is interesting though d is a operator here and d into d uh, which is we are writing here d square they have a different meaning because here it is a derivative uh, and then again derivative. So, uh, 2 times this derivative. So, here d square is also uh, 2 square uh, 2 times the derivative that is our symbol for uh, second order derivatives. So, here this product is working as uh, the same as we work with the numbers and that is uh, the nice property we have with these operators also. So, we can without worries here we can do exactly we do the product with treating this d as as a, a number a real number. So, and because we have seen that these uh, two are same and this is just the product of uh, uh, this one uh, if we forget that this d, d is an operator here. So, we can simply algebraic multiplication we can do. In general also when we have this nth order differential equation like written in this operator form the uh, power n meaning the nth order derivative here a 1 the n minus 1 th order derivative a 2 the n minus 2 th order derivative and so on and the right hand side we have this x. So, here also we can like factorize because this is a kind of polynomial equation we have in terms of d if we do not worry about this operator d. So, it is like a polynomial equation and we can factorize it also. So, this will be equal to this d minus alpha 1 d minus alpha 2 d minus alpha n if these alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 alpha n are the uh, roots of this uh, different of this uh, equation here d power n plus a 1 d power n minus 1 plus so on plus a n is equal to 0. If we have the roots here uh, these alphas then we can write down this as a product of this d minus alpha 1 d minus alpha 2 and so on this y n is equal to x the right hand side. So, with this note here which we will continue in the, in the next lecture it is a very useful uh, to factorize this in this in this way though here d n means the operator which ha, which is the nth order derivative here it is not like d power n, but it is like the nth uh, order derivative uh, when we apply to this y. Well, so coming to the conclusion here. So, we have discussed about this linear differential equations with constant coefficients. So, these uh, were treated as constant uh, at first and in later on in some lectures we will also talk about this non uh, constants. And the general solution what we have seen the one way of getting the general solution of such a non homogeneous equation is to find the complementary function. The complementary function is nothing but the solution of this equation when we set this x to 0 and then the particular integral that is uh, one particular solution of this given non homogeneous. Uh, differential equation. And what else we have seen that uh, this when we write into the operator form we can treat this d power n a 1 d n minus 1 like the polynomial here the algebraic equation and we can factorize this uh, equation once we know the root of this uh, uh, here equation equal to 0. So, we can uh, then write down this operator equation in this form also which is uh, going to play a very important role in finding out the solution this y whether it is a complementary function or a particular integral. So, these are the references we have used here and thank you for your attention.